Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkhoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Week 7 waiver wire targets for the 2023 fantasy football season. Now, at the conclusion of yesterday's Sunday morning live stream, I mentioned that I wanted two things out of Week 6. First and foremost, a lack of injuries. And second of all, upside performances from all of our fantasy prospects so that we could all have a great week. But unfortunately, neither of those two things were on the menu for week six, as we're all dealing with a plethora of injuries to our key players. Again, besides last week's injuries to guys like Justin Jefferson, Devon Achan, you know, James Conner, we're now dealing with injuries from guys like Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, David Montgomery, Christian McCaffrey, Kyron Williams, Debo Samuel, impactful players to say the very least for the remainder of our season and our potential success of the future. Now, besides that, we're also dealing with the fact that week six had a lot of disappointing performances. I went ahead and I actualized those disappointing performances on a per team basis in a half PPR scoring format, four point per passing touchdown format, and found the following. Week six on a per team basis in comparison to the rest of the season was very disappointing. Bottom two in all categories. I mean, just look at the drop off in comparison of averages from week six to week two. And I've already taken into account that we haven't seen the overall performances of tonight's game between the Dallas Cowboys and Los Angeles Chargers. I've already taken into account, of course, the per team basis of bye weeks that have already taken place thus far this season. And with that, there was a huge drop off at quarterback, huge drop off at the wide receiver position in week six. Running back was closer to the average and tight end position has always been inconsistent. Nonetheless, was still a very disappointing week across the board. Week six was not kind to us, but hopefully going into week seven, we're going to find fantasy prospects that are going to give us more consistency, going to be able to help us fill in for the upcoming injuries that we're all going to have to deal with and the upcoming bipocalypse. Going into week seven, there are six teams on by and some teams will be impacted by this bye week far more than others. But hopefully the entire objective of today is to mention players at the running back, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback, kicker and defensive positions that are widely available in your leagues so that you can fill in for these disappointing performances, the injuries, and these bye weeks. For those of you who have yet to do so, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Again, we're making daily fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2023 season with the singular goal of trying to help you guys win a fantasy football championship. We are very close to achieving our goal of 80,000 subscribers. So if you have not yet already, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for the support. Now, while you're subscribing to the channel, down in the description of the video, there are timestamps for each individual player. So if you're looking for a specific player, be sure to find those there. Also, while you're down there in the description, be sure to check out underdog fantasy at the end of today's episode i'll be putting together some pick em slips for tonight's game between the dallas cowboys and los angeles Chargers. so if you guys have not yet already be sure to use code andrew via underdog fantasy make that first time deposit minimum of ten dollars because not only are you going to get the first time deposit match up to five hundred dollars which again limited time offer you're also going to get my ranking sent to you every single sunday morning i will personally send you guys my rankings which is by position by tier top 100 flex half PPR, full PPR every single Sunday morning for the remainder of the season. So regardless of what you're doing on Sunday mornings, you'll have my rankings and an upper hand upon your league mates. So if you're wondering if you have the opportunity of helping me help you for the remainder of the season, be sure to check out the map to the right side of the screen to determine your eligibility draft responsibly via underdog fantasy. And again, if you sign up today, you'll have an opportunity of putting together a pick'em slip with Dak Prescott 0.5 total yards. So you can start off your journey via underdog fantasy the right way. Thank you very much for supporting. All right, let's move on to the running back conversation. Talking about our top six waiver wire running backs going into the week. A reminder, players like Chuba Hubbard, Deontay Foreman, Roshan Johnson, Ty J Spears, Jalen Warren, they should already be rostered in your leagues. And the percentages at which they're already rostered leans me towards the remaining players that you guys can see on the right side of the screen. Of the six players on the right side of the screen, five of them are only there because of injury. Actually, you know what? All six of them are there because of injuries. Talking about Christian McCaffrey dealing with a recent injury, David Montgomery, Kyron Williams, James Conner, Nick Chubb, all these players are here because of injuries and going into the future of our season, hopefully they can make an impact in terms of filling in for the time that is potentially missed. Now, the number one and number two option is Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell. Again, with Christian McCaffrey leaving yesterday's game with an oblique injury, the immediate thing that we saw was that Jordan Mason was the number two running back. Of course, thus far this season, Elijah Mitchell has dealt with a lot of injuries. And unfortunately, throughout his entire career, he has dealt with a lot of injuries. And because of that, the San Francisco 49ers have not been able to really hang their hat on the idea of Elijah Mitchell being the number two back of this offense. And yesterday, as soon as Christian McCaffrey left the game, 
the remaining overall offensive snaps and rushing attempts went in the direction of Jordan Mason. He had himself five rushing attempts for 27 rushing yards. He scored the rushing touchdown in the absence of Christian McCaffrey. And going forward, if Christian McCaffrey is going to miss any semblance of time, of course, Jordan Mason would be the primary backup running back. Now, there could be a conversation as to these two running backs splitting snaps going forward within this offense, considering both of them can very easily perform well within this offensive scheme. And we've already seen Elijah Mitchell going back to his rookie season, definitely be able to dominate within the scheme we could see them both you know split snaps overall but my expectation is that first and foremost Jordan Mason is going to be the primary handcuff running back to Christian McCaffrey going forward on top of it Jordan Mason is currently only rostered in five percent of Yahoo leagues four percent of sleeper leagues in comparison to Elijah Mitchell 28 percent of Yahoo leagues and 35 percent of sleeper leagues so if Jordan Mason is available be sure to pick him up in regards to handcuffing Christian McCaffrey or potentially having a running back for the next couple weeks if in fact you know Christian McCaffrey is going to miss time that you can fill in due to the bye weeks and upcoming injuries the number three option is Kareem Hunt. Now, like I mentioned earlier, one of the primary reasons he is even here is because of Nick Chubb's injury. Again, in the absence of Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford is still going to maintain the RB1 status. He's going to get the majority of rushing attempts. He's going to get the majority of offensive snaps and the majority of rushing yards like he did yesterday. But we have all seen that Kevin Stefanski really does prefer Kareem Hunt as a goal line back. And that's what we've witnessed over the last couple of seasons going back to 2020, where we have seen the vulture nature of Kareem Hunt take over. Kareem Hunt yesterday had himself 12 rushing attempts, 47 rushing yards, and stole a touchdown with a nice rushing touchdown there. Three targets, three receptions, 24 receiving yards, 14.6 fantasy points. If we can continue to see this offense lean on the running game in the absence of Deshaun Watson, a two-headed monster within this backfield, of course, behind this elite offensive line, the expectation is that Kareem Hunt could be of great value going forward. As of this current moment in time, he's already rostered in 36% of Yahoo leagues, 45% of sleeper leagues. So he may not be readily available, but if in fact he is, could definitely help going forward. Our number four is Keontae Ingram. Amongst all running backs in the Arizona Cardinals backfield, trying to fill in for James Conner's overall efforts, Keontae Ingram had the most overall touches. He had 12 total touches, 10 rushing attempts for 40 yards, two targets, two receptions, 11 receiving yards, and scored 6.1 fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format. Now, even though he had the majority of touches, he only played 37% of the offensive snaps. He only handled 50% of the overall running back rushing attempts and targets out of this backfield. And Amari DiMercato had more overall offensive snaps. Now, but despite that being the case, Amari DiMercato was not utilized as a running back to get himself targets and or rushing attempts. He was primarily used as a pass blocking back within this overall game. And the expectation going forward is that Keontae Ingram is going to be the primary back of this offense based on the overall opportunities he was given within this offense. And the fact that Amari DiMercato is kind of the third string running back considering a lot of the overall rushing attempts also went in the direction of Damian Williams yesterday within this offense, which was quite a surprise to say the very least. The number five option is Craig Reynolds. Again, we've already seen the fact that David Montgomery is going to potentially miss some time with a rib injury. We have seen that Jameer Gibbs is dealing with a hamstring injury. He's missed each of the last two games with that set hamstring injury. And Zonovan Knight, who played in this offense a couple weeks ago in the absence of David Montgomery, he is out with a season-ending shoulder injury. So if, in fact, we're not going to see Jameer Gibbs return and we're going to see David Montgomery miss a significant amount of time or a couple weeks here or there, Craig Reynolds stepping into this offense will be the primary RB. And considering he's behind an elite offensive line and he has demonstrated that he can find success in seasons past as the starting running back of this offense. When other running backs are not available due to injury, Craig Reynolds should absolutely be someone that we should be looking into as a potential handcuff option for David Montgomery going forward, or potentially someone that you can start in the absence of both Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs going into the upcoming weeks. The final option of the running back position is Zach Evans. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, Ronnie Rivers, the backup running back for this offense, is probably going to be placed on the injured reserve. Besides that, Kyron Williams is dealing with an ankle sprain. They take on the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. And from what we've already witnessed this season, from weeks one through six, the starting running back of the LA Rams is a very valuable overall position to have. So if, in fact, we're not going to have Kyron Williams available, you want to have Zach Evans on roster because he will be given rushing opportunity and he will have touchdown upside. And with those overall opportunities within the given week, perhaps he's maybe just a one-week play, but that kind of value should not be ignored and potentially be acted upon within the given week for fantasy purposes. All right, let's move on to the wide receiver conversation. Let me remind you guys, even though we have these six players on screen, players like Tyler Boyd, Jamison Williams, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Deontay Johnson, just in case he was dropped because he's been on the injured reserve for the last four weeks, five weeks. 
be sure that those guys are already on roster. Besides those players, we have players like Kendrick Bourne, our number one. Kendrick Bourne finally had his most relevant week since week one. Had himself 11 targets, 10 catches, 89 receiving yards for 14.3 half PPR fantasy points. Considering this offense is going to be a negative game scripts for the remainder of the season, the expectation is that they'll be throwing for majority of games. And hopefully... Kendrick Bourne will continue to be a consistent option, and it wasn't just a matter of the matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders giving him relevancy, but hopefully Mac Jones is going to throw the ball far more and get these receivers some utilization. We have yet to see Devontae Parker or Juju Smith-Schuster have any sort of upside. The tight end position has been quite quiet for this New England Patriots offense for the last couple of weeks. So we're going to hope that Kendrick Bourne, as the primary number one of this offense, could have value going forward. They do take on the Buffalo Bills. He's had himself great matchups in the past against that defense, and considering the absence of Tredavious White, could find value within the given week in a negative game script. Our number two is Josh Downs. Like we mentioned on our Hidden Gems video, Josh Downs, in the absence of... Anthony Richardson and with Gardner Minshew sees himself a high volume of targets. Eight total targets, five catches, 21 receiving yards. Save this week with an overall touchdown. But a touchdown will always suffice just in case there's a lack of overall receiving yards. Nonetheless, this upcoming week, this team takes on the Cleveland Browns. It is going to be very difficult to run the ball on the Browns. Going into the given week against the Cleveland Browns, I'm anticipating for Gardner Minshew to throw for majority of the game. Currently, Josh Downs is only rostered in 33% of Yahoo leagues, 49% of sleeper leagues. He, per he potentially shouldn't be available considering he was a hidden gem and someone that we should have already rostered. But if he is, be sure to go ahead and address that. Curtis Samuels are number three, another one of these hidden gems from Friday's episode. Again, Curtis Samuel within this offense for three consecutive games has scored a touchdown. He continues to see a high volume of overall opportunity. And as long as they continue to utilize him down in the red zone, of course, he is going to be of fantasy relevancy. They take on the New York Giants. It is a very advantageous matchup. I'm hoping for another great week from Curtis Samuel once again. Our number four is Rashi Rice. Within the overall wide receiver conversation of the Kansas City Chiefs, there are very few guys that we can trust, but Rashi Rice, as of late, has seen himself a high yardage count and a decent amount of targets. Now, when I say decent amount of targets, we're talking about four to six on an average weekly basis. That's not a great number, but within this offense, within the upside that they have, this upcoming week, they'll take on the Los Angeles Chargers in week seven. There is an expectation that the secondary for the Chargers has not played well thus far this season, and they could be exposed once again by Kansas City. And of course, Patrick Mahomes overall efforts. Wanda Robinson's our number five. If in fact, we're going to continue to see Daniel Jones miss time. Wanda Robinson with Tyrod Taylor. Eight targets, eight receptions, 62 overall receiving yards. Currently only rostered in 17% of leagues on Yahoo. 29% of leagues on Sleeper. Paris Campbell within this offense was relegated to being a return specialist. And if Wanda Robinson is going to primarily take over that slot receiving role, he obviously is going to continue to have a lot of value within this offense. The final player I wanted to mention at the wide receiver position is Rashid Shahid. He's already rostered in 32% of Yahoo leagues, 28% of sleeper leagues. Again, he does have touchdown upside every week with a deep ball reception. Considering Derek Carr likes to throw his fair share of deep balls down the field. I mean, you just go back to the days within the Raiders offense. He certainly likes to throw the ball deep, but... Rashid Shahid isn't a consistent option. But in great matchups specifically, this upcoming Thursday night against the Jacksonville Jaguars could be of value. Moving on, let's talk about tight ends and quarterbacks. Our top three tight ends going into this week, guys that, again, should already be rostered are guys like Dalton Schultz, Pat Fryermuth, Logan Thomas. But if, in fact, guys like Johnny Smith are available, which, again, hopefully he's not, currently only rostered in 19% of leagues on Yahoo, 25% on Sleeper, Johnny Smith is coming off of another great week. His last five games... 6.7, 6.2, 12.5, 7.7, and 11.6. Found the end zone in week six. Four receptions on five targets, 36 receiving yards, and a touchdown. They take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the expectation is that this offense, with a relevant John U. Smith and a relevant uh, Kyle Pitts, both finding the end zone, will hopefully continue to maintain within this offense as the primary two receiving options outside of Drake London. The number two option of the tight end position is someone coming off the bye week. It is Luke Musgrave. He was potentially dropped because of the bye week. And if in fact that's the case, pick him up. Again, only rostered in 18% of Yahoo leagues, 24% of sleeper leagues, very similar roster ship percentages in comparison to Johnny Smith. Luke Musgrave in the last two full games he has played. Again, we're not counting the game in which he left due to a concussion against the Detroit Lions. But in the last two games, 7.9 fantasy points, 4.9 fantasy points, eight targets, seven targets. If he's going to continue to get himself a high volume of opportunity, which leads to 12 receptions in his last two full games, the expectation is that he has a lot of value. And going forward, specifically in this upcoming weekend's matchup against the Denver Broncos, the Denver Broncos are an advantageous matchup as they've given up a lot of points to opposing tight ends. Washington tight ends, seven catches, 89 in a touchdown. Chicago tight ends, 
10 catches, 111, two touchdowns. New York Jets tight ends, seven catches for 81. And of course, Kansas City Chiefs tight ends, 11 catches for 138 against that defense. We're hoping for upside potentially for Luke Musgrave coming off of the bye week. Michael Mayer, the rookie tight end that many of us thought could have immediate value going into the season, who unfortunately has not been able to kind of break away from Austin Hooper within this overall offense, has seen himself far more opportunity in the last two games. Yesterday, he had himself five catches on six targets for 75 receiving yards, 10 fantasy points, and going forward, the expectation is that he's going to continue to be a you know bigger role within this offense. With Hunter Renfro's name on the trade block, if it's just going to be Jacoby Myers and Devontae Adams as a number one and two, we should see an expansion within the role of Michael Mayer within this offense. He's been relevant. He has seen himself a good target share within the last two games and hopefully going up against the Chicago Bears, which is an advantageous matchup going into the given week. Michael Mayer could potentially be a value to you. Let's talk about the three quarterbacks that I really like going into the week. It is thin at the quarterback position considering there are six teams on by, but the angry bird, Sam Howell, is our number one. I mean, we've mentioned him every single week for the last like four weeks now, but currently only rostered in 38% of Yahoo leagues, 40% of sleeper leagues. Sam Howell, five of his six games this season consists of 15 or more fantasy points. Week six is the first game of his career in which he had three passing touchdowns. Sam Howell continuing his streak of success going up against the New York Giants should be a good week for him. We move on to Baker Mayfield. Even though he sustained a injury yesterday, it's to his non-throwing hand. I'm not too worried about it. In the three games this season in which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have taken on teams that are not elite in the NFC. So basically, not the games in which they took on the Detroit Lions or Philadelphia Eagles. When, he, when they've taken on the Chicago Bears, New Orleans Saints, or Minnesota Vikings, Baker Mayfield has put up 16.02, 18.38, and 22.94. Taking on the Atlanta Falcons, not an elite team in the NFC. The expectation is that we should see Baker Mayfield find value. Derek Carr is the final option. Derek Carr in the last two games, 15.72. 16.32 they take on jacksonville jacksonville may be without trevor lawrence and if that's going to be the case there may be a lot of opportunities for this defense to force turnovers get the ball back and give Derek carr an opportunity to throw the ball we just saw gardner and Minshew throw for over 300 yards against this defense so there's an expectation that Derek carr should be able to air it out against a team that obviously is pretty good in terms of stopping the run so hopefully Derek carr can step up with a task on hand let's move on to kickers and defense slash special team let's talk about our three kickers number one blake groupie in the last three games for the New Orleans Saints, 10, 14, and 9 fantasy points. They take on the Jacksonville Jaguars on Thursday Night Football. He is available in 95-plus percent of leagues, both Yahoo and Sleeper. So be sure to go ahead and pick him up if you need a kicker. Let's talk about Dustin Hopkins. Again, in the absence of Deshaun Watson, there wasn't an expectation that this team could score a high volume of points, especially kicking points. But Dustin Hopkins, regardless of weather, has demonstrated within the Cleveland offense, he is definitely of value. Thus far this season, his fantasy point outputs in his five games, 12, 9, 12, 5, and most recently, 17. So we're in a conversation here taking on the Indianapolis Colts at home that they could end up scoring a high volume of points once again from the kicker position. Moving on to the final option, Chris Boswell coming off of the bye week. Again, Chris Boswell only rostered in 7% of Yahoo leagues, 3% of sleeper leagues. He's coming off of the last four games of 12, 15, 6, and 11 fantasy points. They take on the LA Rams. Of course, this offense continues to stall out near the red zone. Chris Boswell will be of value. Let's talk about our top three defenses. Number one, Cleveland Browns. The fact that they were able to do what they did yesterday to the San Francisco 49ers is ridiculous. Of course, if Jake Moody didn't miss two field goals, you know, we wouldn't even be having this conversation to its capacity, but the Cleveland Browns defense certainly has demonstrated that they can stop opposing offenses. And considering the fact that we just saw Gardner Mitchell throw three interceptions against the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, why not against the Cleveland Browns, who is an even better defense thus far this season, forcing a lot of turnovers and having themselves upside within the given week. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are another defense I wanted to mention. They take on the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons will not be at home. Desmond Raider on the road is a mess. And considering that situation, there is an expectation that we should see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, who played very well yesterday against the Detroit Lions. But despite the loss, they primarily were great in terms of stopping the run, which again, against the Atlanta Falcons is the key to finding success. Thus far this season, in the three games in which they haven't played against elite offenses, so when they haven't played against the Philadelphia Eagles and or Detroit Lions, when they played against Minnesota, Chicago, and New Orleans, we have seen the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense put up 9, 17, and 13 fantasy points as a defense. The final option is the Green Bay Packers defense, again, coming off of the bye week. They take on the Denver Broncos. Defenses against the Denver Broncos in the last two games have scored 18 and 14 fantasy points. They could be a value taking on Russell Wilson, who cannot stop turning over the ball, 
there is an expectation that the Green Bay Packers defense, of course, are going to look in the mirror after their last performance against the Las Vegas Raiders, and they're going to step up as a defense. And of course, with all the first round picks that they have in high draft capital, hopefully put together a performance against the Denver Broncos that is relevant for fantasy purposes. All right, with that all covered, let's go ahead and let's transition and talk about some underdog pickups for tonight's game before we close out today's video. Let's check that out. So as of recording this video, I had an opportunity of taking Justin Herbert at 0.5 total yards. Again, this was just a special play and it ended at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. So probably by the time that this video is up, it probably won't be available, but you got to keep an eye on, you know, underdog fantasy and their pick em slips because it may have an opportunity of taking advantage of that. I went ahead and put them alongside of CeeDee Lamb and Tony Pollard in terms of both of their yardage counts going higher. But if in fact, I'm going to give you my favorite play of the day, it would be CeeDee Lamb going higher on his receiving yards and Austin Eckler going higher on his total fantasy points. Again, we know that Austin Eckler is a machine for fantasy. He is a touchdown machine. I think he scored what, 39 touchdowns in the last 36 regular season games he has played he has been a machine he's going to find the end zone and if and when he does the yardage is going to be there the receiving upside is going to be there he's my top two you know you know ranked running back within the given week the expectation is that 16 fantasy points and a half ppr should not be difficult for him to amass over the course of this game and i think cd lamb against one of the weakest secondaries the best matchup at the wide receiver position should be able to get himself a high volume of targets receptions and of course receiving yards to tack on top of that that's my play of the day to conclude week six of the 2023 fantasy football season so be sure to go ahead travel on over to underdog fantasy if in fact you'd like some of these potential other plays again whether it's one of these other plays at these other positions you can go ahead take advantage of the opportunity to travel on over to underdog fantasy put together a pick em slip in regards to potentially players on both sides of this matchup because again this should be a higher scoring event between these two teams i'm just trusting in the idea that austin eckler should be able to score a high volume of fantasy points as he typically does and like we've seen in the last couple of weeks justin herbert has highly benefited from the fact that there has been no austin eckler and he's been able to fall into the end zone with those overall opportunities those are going to go in the direction of eckler eckler could score two touchdowns today and if in fact that happens he'll easily amass the fantasy point total that I'm looking towards. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Tomorrow, I'll return with my running back rankings for week seven. Click the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. Use code Andrew via Underdog Fantasy. Again, take advantage of the opportunity. And until next time, thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you guys. Peace.